Let's close our eyes for prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you at this time. We bless your name because you're always there for us. And we want to promise you will always be there in the ministry in Jesus' name. Thank you for your hand upon us. Thank you for the work you've given us to do. And thank you because you are leading us to understand what leadership in the New Testament is all about. We are praying, Lord, that all these things we are learning and studying will become part of our lives in Jesus' name. That we will lead your people according to your mind. Thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. You can sit down. Keep me true, Lord Jesus, keep me true. Sing aloud, keep me true, Lord Jesus, keep me true. There is a race I must run. There is a victory to be won. Give me power every hour to be true keep me meek keep me meek lord jesus keep me meek keep me meek lord jesus keep me meek there is a race i must run there is a victory to be one give me power every hour to be me keep me calm keep me calm lord jesus keep me calm keep me calm lord jesus keep me calm there is a race i must run there is a victory to be won give me power every hour to be calm and keep me kind keep me kind lord jesus keep me kind keep me kind lord jesus keep me kind there is a race I must run. There is a victory to be won. Give me power every hour to be kind. Keep me fit. Keep me fit, Lord Jesus. Keep me fit. Keep me fit, Lord Jesus. Keep me fit. There is a race I must run. There is a victory to be won. Give me power every hour to be fit. Now keep me true. Keep me true, Lord. Jesus, keep me true. Keep me true, Lord Jesus, keep me true. There is a race I must run. There is a victory to be won. Give me power every hour to be true. Amen. We're looking at Luke chapter 19. We're looking at verse 10. Luke chapter 19, looking at verse 10. For the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. The Lord shows us the very height and the very model and the very standard and the very measure of what a leader should be. And according to the New Testament standard, Jesus Christ is the leader we ought to follow. And is the leader we ought to emulate. In fact, he said, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. And the Lord Jesus Christ takes up each of us because he wants to make us the fishers of men. He wants to make us the leaders we ought to be. In making us, there is a process. One, he melts us. 
and how Peter was melted when he met the Lord. And he said, Depart from me, O Lord, I'm a sinful man. And how Isaiah was melted when he saw the vision of the Lord. First of all, in the process of making us, he melts us. And then he molds us. In the process of making us the kind of leaders we ought to be, he molds us. You remember that vessel that was in the house of the potter? And as the, uh, Jeremiah was watching, then that vessel was marched in the side and in the hand of the potter. And then he said, Jeremiah, if the potter is going to make another thing and then removes that thing again, and eventually he said, Go back to the house of Israel. Can I not do to you what I've done to this vessel? Says the Lord, He melts us and He molds us. Not only that he made some molds, he does another thing, and that is that he mentors us. And in mentoring us, that's where the correction comes. That's where the instruction comes. That's why the encouragement comes. That's why the delegation comes. That's where the supervision comes. Because he wants to so mentor us as to be able to reproduce himself in us. In mentoring us, eventually he matures us. And he says, you are not there yet. And that's why we have all these conferences. That's why we have all these meetings, the leadership uh, planning meeting. Because he wants to mature us. That will be the kind of people and the leaders and the servants that we ought to be. And eventually it brings us to the very measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. And so we find the Lord Jesus Christ whom we ought to follow in our leadership style. And he said he's the son of man. He comes to seek. And he comes to save that which was lost. And you'll find that if we're leaders, we ought to be in the business of seeking. Seeking the people. Yes, we're seeking the lost, but we're also seeking some believers. Some believers that are hidden away. And they do not know their way into the fold and into the ministry. And just like we've learned in all these series, when you get back home, you're looking at some of the leaders that are hiding and some of the leaders that are just hidden away with the multitudes of the people you're searching for them you're seeking for them so that you'll bring them the hand of the lord and they also will begin the process of making them melting them molding them maturing them mentoring them until they come to the fullness of the stature of the lord jesus christ in leadership we're looking at acts of the apostles chapter 11 acts chapter 11 and i'm reading from verse 25 acts 11 verse 25 then departed Barnabas to Tarsus for to seek Saul for to seek Saul Saul had been born again he wasn't Paul yet he was still Saul but he had been born again his life had been changed and transformed and he had not discovered yet where to start the ministry of course the lord had told him far back in acts of the apostles chapter 9 what he will do but he had not started very fully he did a little in damascus and then came to jerusalem eventually now we find him in tarsus but there was somebody a leader barnabas he went to seek for saul and look at this in verse 26 and when he had found him he brought him unto antioch and it came to pass that a whole year they assembled themselves with the church and taught much people and the disciples were called christians first in antioch would you remember it was in that antioch the holy spirit said separate unto me paul and barnabas barnabas and saul and then not only that that the leader is seeking the lost the leader is seeking the believers that eventually will be made will be molded will be melted and will be matured and will be eventually uh, will be mentored and not only that is seeking out the book of the word of god isaiah chapter 34 isaiah chapter 34 i'm looking at verse 16 i will seek that which was lost look at that i, I even opened um, ezekiel and will say that was by mistake because i really wanted isaiah and see what i found in ezekiel how wonderful sometimes you make a mistake and god makes a miracle out of that mistake look at this now we're going to look at ezekiel this is just extra this is not in my note in ezekiel chapter 34 i'm looking at verse 16 i will seek that which was lost and bring again that which was driven away 
and will bind up that which was broken and will strengthen that which was sick but i will destroy the fat and the strong i will feed them with judgment now let's go to isaiah in isaiah chapter 34 we're looking at verse 16 isaiah chapter 34 verse 16 seek ye out the book of the lord and read no one of these shall fail none shall want shall lack her mate for my mouth it has commanded and his spirit it has gathered them seek out the book of the law of the lord that's what a leader will do a leader needs the word of god and you'll seek out the book of the word of god in nehemiah chapter 2 nehemiah chapter 2 we're looking at verse 10 nehemiah chapter 2 reading from verse 10 here we're told in this passage of scripture uh, verse 10 of chapter 2 when shambalat and the whole right and tobiah the servant the ammonite heard of it it grieved them exceedingly that there was come a man to seek the welfare of the children of israel we as leaders in the church leaders in the fold leaders among the people of god we should seek the welfare the profit of the people of god well we're learning from all these scriptures that leaders are seekers leaders are seekers number one they are conscientious seekers number two concerned seekers number three compassionate seekers number four committed seekers number five consistent seekers number six confident seekers we are seekers seeking for the lost seeking for believers who are hidden away maybe in their hometown and they have not discovered yet how they ought to be up and doing in the ministry we're seeking for them and we're seeking the word of the lord the book of the law and we're seeking the welfare and the profit of the people of god we're conscientious about it we're determined and diligent about it and we're up and doing about it and we're concerned we're seeking them for a purpose we're seeking the laws we're concerned for their salvation and we're seeking the believers we're seeking them concerned about their usefulness and we're seeking the word of the lord concerned that will get the message out of the mouth of god and give it unto the people we're seeking for the profit and the welfare of the people of god that everything the lord has provided for them will be able to bring to the people of god we're concerned we're compassionate and it is our compassion that drives us that moves us that stirs us up within making us to go after those people because we have compassion on them seeking them and we are committed to it will not allow any other thing to distract us and will not be sidetracked or will not be kind of diverted to another thing this is what we call committed seeking and we're consistent about it we did it yesterday we're going to do it today we do it today we're going to do it tomorrow we're consistent about it and we're confident he that seeketh findeth and to him that knocketh it shall be opened because we know that the lord is with us and we are with the lord and we are cooperating with the lord in this searching and seeking that's how we know we're going to actually find what we see now as we talk about the leader and we see him now as a seeker that he is as the seeking leader let me go over it again number one the seeking leader is seeking the lord seek ye the lord and see ye meek of the earth we're seeking the lord we want to find out what does he have for me what does he have for me to succeed in the ministry number one seeking the lord number two seeking the law of the lord isn't that what ezra did in ezra chapter 7 looking at verse 10 ezra chapter 7 verse 10 for ezra had prepared is that to seek the law of the lord and to do it and to teach in israel statutes and uh, judgments you seek the lord you're seeking the law of the lord and then number three you are seeking the lost number four we seek light for those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death we're seeking the light of the gospel for them number five we're seeking life for those who are fainting on the top of every street and we're praying for them and we're asking the lord that the lord will give them life because they're fainting number six we seek love in all with all and for all we seek love in all 
in all the people we meet we're seeking for the love of god to come in them to be born in them and to be stirred up in them and to flow through them and to operate through them we seek love in all not only that we seek love with all all the people we relate with all the people we interact with all the people that we're working with we're seeking love with all and we're seeking love for all all the families that are represented in our congregation we're seeking love for them that the lord will cement their family relationships with the love of god actually from all this we understand no one can be a leader after god's own heart without being a seeker no one can be a leader after god's own heart without being a a seeker i divide the message of three parts number one the priority of a kingdom seeking leader the priority of a kingdom seeking leader number two the passion of a soul seeking leader the passion of a soul seeking leader number three the perseverance of a treasure seeking leader the perseverance of a treasure seeking leader i come to number one the priority of a kingdom seeking leader in matthew chapter 6 matthew chapter 6 looking at verse 33 in matthew chapter 6 verse 33 here are the words of the lord jesus christ as he tells us but seek ye first the kingdom of god and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you the lord is telling us that if we're members of the body of christ if we're children of god and if we're citizens of the kingdom of god and if we're the followers of the lord jesus christ there is something that ought to be the priority in our lives priority in our ministry and priority in everything that we do we're seeking the kingdom of god and we're seeking that force we bring that as number one we make that the priority seeking force the kingdom of god not only that and is righteousness the righteousness of the kingdom and the righteousness that comes by the grace of god that's the righteousness of the kingdom the righteousness that comes through the atonement of the lord jesus christ on the cross of calvary through the cleansing of the blood of the lamb that comes to us not something we're struggling to have not something that we're working out not something that we're generating with our own human resources but something that is coming from calvary through the lord jesus christ into our lives that's the righteousness we're talking about and it says we seek that righteousness and we're seeking it from the lord ask and it shall be given you and seek and ye shall find and knock and it shall be opened unto you for everyone that asketh receiveth and he that seeketh findeth and to him that knocketh it shall be open it tells us then seek that force the kingdom and seek that righteousness and then all the other things shall be added unto you in this area of seeking let's look at something in jeremiah chapter 45 jeremiah chapter 45 and we're reading from verse 5 jeremiah chapter 45 verse 5 and seekest thou great things for thyself seek them not how the people that come into the kingdom are they ought to realize how the people that are called to the service of the lord and to leadership ought to understand that there's something when you come into the kingdom and the lord has raised you to be a leader all the goals you are setting all the dreams you are having all the intentions and the plans you are making you know sometimes uh, we, we may just so much on planning and we almost re we always remind ourselves he who fails to plan is planning to fail and then with that cliche that is with that statement we go out and we say i am planning i'm reaching for the mountain and i'm reaching for the greatest and i'm going to be the greatest man the greatest preacher and the greatest leader in the universe in this uh, whole world at this time in this generation ah wait a minute that thing you are planning to do and that thing you are planning to achieve what's the purpose for that what's the reason for that why do you want to be the greatest leader is it for yourself as somebody was praying with his wife and they wanted to go to a crusade and as they were going to the crusade you know they need to pray and of course everybody knows that you ought to pray 
and praying with the wife what a wonderful thing when your wife can be can be united with you and then you're praying and this uh, man that man is gone home to glory now his name is Ari Greenwood and he was praying with the wife I had this directly from him himself he said oh Lord uh, we're going for the crusade save souls today save souls today and then he added something that everybody may know that you are using Ari Greenwood mightily and the wife stopped him I said, why did you say that? We well, want God to save souls. But we're not wanting God to save souls so that the people will know that God is using you. That's not the purpose. And he said, my wife, I'm sorry, it was in my heart. I didn't want to hide it. And because it was my heart, I needed somebody to correct me. That's why I said it out so that you can hear and challenge me. And because it had been coming to my mind most of the time, I felt I should say it out so that somebody will hear and cut me short and say, don't do that again. Now that you have told me, I know what direction to go. There are many people that are seeking something for themselves and we're to seek the kingdom and its righteousness. We're not seeking those things for ourselves. Uh, actually, you will understand that uh, they, there were people that were all they were seeking was just for themselves. And uh, when Jesus saw that kind of attitude, uh, the Lord was bothered, the Lord was concerned that it's good to seek, but what's the reason for your seeking? what's the reason for you to I, I want this i want this i want that what's the reason for that in john chapter 5 john chapter 5 in verse 44 how can ye believe which receive honor one of another and seek not the honor that cometh from god only you want to be used of god great are you seeking honor for yourself are you seeking glory for yourself are you seeking the expansion of your own kingdom are you an empire builder or you are the kingdom seeker and you're seeking only for the kingdom of god and his righteousness in philippians chapter 2 philippians chapter 2 we're looking at this verse of scripture here in philippians chapter 2 and here is the problem that a lot of the people got into it tells us in verse 21 for all seek their own and not the things which are jesus christ's all seek their own you challenge yourself you ask yourself in the things that you do in the things that you plan and when you prepare messages and when you give and deliver those messages far far back deep 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 within your heart what's the thought that is coming up i'm going to be my best great good to be your best why do you want to be your best so that everybody will know i'm better than the rest of them uh-huh that is it now i'm going to be my best and this program we're going to have is going to be a great program so that everybody will know that now my church has come into the five thousand member bracket uh -uh, there you are there you are you know it's the intention of the heart is the purpose of the heart the reason why we're seeking why we're seeking success and why we're seeking something it is not just for the glory of god it is so that the people will know that here is who i am and this is what i am and this is what i can do because it says here for all seek their own and not the things which are jesus christ just go back to verse 4 of that same chapter 2 of philippians look not on every man on his own things but every man on the things of others that's what we are to do in colossians chapter 3 colossians chapter 3 reading from verse 1 if ye then be risen with christ seek those things which are above where christ seated on the right hand of god and let's come back to matthew chapter 6 and let's set ourselves right let's be facing the right direction let's be thinking about the right thing let's seek uh, something good for a good purpose and for a good reason it tells us in matthew chapter 6 reading verse 33 but seek ye first the kingdom of god and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you we're seeking the kingdom how do we seek the kingdom by the way we're seeking the kingdom after we have been born again we're seeking for the glory of the kingdom the expansion of the kingdom in um, john chapter 3 john chapter 3 verse 3 john chapter 3 
Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. If I'm seeking the kingdom of God then, and his righteousness, and I come as an evangelist to preach, what am I preaching? I'm preaching about the kingdom. I'm preaching that the people will be born again. I'm preaching that the people will know the Lord. I am preaching that the people will turn away from their sins and they will become children of God and kingdom citizens. In Romans chapter 14, Romans chapter 14, we're looking at verse 17. Romans chapter 14, verse 17, for the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. The kingdom of God is righteousness and it is peace and it's joy in the Holy Ghost. Have you, do you remember, uh, you know, what they taught us when we were still in the children's church? They said, Joy is Jesus and you with nothing in between. Do you remember that? That's how we have joy. When there's Jesus, when there's you, there's a zero, there's an O, there's nothing between. Then they taught us when we were growing up uh, in Sunday school, and they said joy is actually Jesus first, others next, and you last. And if you're seeking the kingdom of God, this is how to seek the kingdom of God. And you put Jesus first, and then others next, and then you last. And this is how we seek the kingdom of God. And in everything you do, in all the messages you give, and in the purpose, the pattern, the reason, or doing whatever you are doing, you want righteousness and the Holy Ghost to be in the lives of the people. And you want the peace of God to reign in their hearts, and to reign in the church, and to reign in their families. And you also want the joy of the Lord to be the strength of the people. In Hebrews chapter 12, Hebrews chapter 12, we're reading from verse 28. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 28 wherefore we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be moved let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and uh, godly fear that's seeking the kingdom of God already we, we know we're going to receive a kingdom which cannot be moved and the Lord has put us, has placed us in the ministry at such a time like this. And because our priority is to seek the kingdom of God, we're going to God in prayer that he will give us grace whereby we will serve him acceptably. And as we look at the ministry of Jesus Christ, that's exactly what he did. He preached the gospel of the kingdom. And he wanted the message of the kingdom to reach everyone. And if we're doing this uh, work of God the way he wants it done, and we're seeking the kingdom of God, that kingdom of God will be priority in our lives. And we'll have passion for that kingdom of God. And we we'll want people to receive the kingdom and to enter into the kingdom. And let's look at Luke chapter 4. In Luke chapter 4, verse 43. And he said unto them, I must preach the kingdom of God to all the cities also, for therefore am I sent. I must preach the kingdom of God. Uh, if you look at the messages I've been preaching, do you ever mention the kingdom? Do you ever think about the king of the kingdom? And do you lead the people to the king of the kingdom? Do you show us the responsibility, the lifestyle, the duty of the members, of the citizens of the kingdom? But Jesus Christ preached the gospel of the kingdom. And we are to preach the kingdom. We are to be kingdom seekers. Seek the kingdom of God first and his righteousness. In Luke chapter 8 verse 1. Luke chapter 8 verse 1. And it came to pass afterward that he went throughout every city and village. Preaching and showing the glad tidings of the kingdom of God. And the twelve were with him. He went about every city. And he went about every village. And as he went about from city to city and from village to village, there was something that was emphasizing the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye and believe the gospel. The kingdom of God is very near. Enter into the kingdom. You must be born again because except you are born again, you will not see, you will not enter the kingdom. 
and accept you exalt the king of the kingdom and enthrone him in your heart you will not be able to live with god forever in fact your religion will all be will all be in vain he was preaching the good news the glad tidings the gospel of the kingdom of god and the twelve were with him isn't that significant that the twelve they were listening to the lord jesus christ as he sp spoke about the kingdom as he preached about the kingdom as he taught about the kingdom and uh, there's something interesting and surprising in acts of the apostles chapter one acts of the apostles chapter one you know when you get to acts of the apostles chapter one we have already gone through the death of christ and the burial of christ and the resurrection of christ and then we're told that he spent 40 days with them what was he doing those 40 days acts chapter one verse three to whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs being seen of them 40 days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of god see the centrality of the kingdom in the ministry of christ in the message of christ in the mission of christ that even after he rose from the dead and he was with them for 40 days he was speaking concerning pertaining to the kingdom of god what did the believers do what did the christians do what did the apostles do what did those uh, preachers those leaders of the new testament what did they do what were they speaking about about the kingdom about the kingdom in acts of the apostles chapter 8 acts chapter 8 verse 12 but when they believed philip preaching the things concerning the kingdom of god when philip went to samaria and was preaching he was preaching of things concerning the kingdom of god being born again that's in the kingdom he has removed us away from the kingdom of this world he has exalted and lifted us up he has translated us to the kingdom of his dear son is the kingdom and he wants us to live a righteous life the righteousness of the citizens of the kingdom is still the kingdom and then the power of the kingdom the holy ghost coming upon us so that we'll be able to be right good witnesses effective witnesses concerning the king of the kingdom it is the kingdom and when philip went to samaria here is what he did he was preaching to them the things concerning the kingdom of god and the name of jesus christ and they were baptized both men and women when paul the apostle came on later what was he doing to acts of the apostles chapter 14 in acts chapter 14 let me read from verse 21 so you get the background to this thing in acts chapter 14 verse 21 and when they had preached the gospel to that city and had taught many they returned again to lystra and iconium and antioch confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith and that we must through much tribulation enter into the kingdom there's a present kingdom there's a spiritual kingdom and yet there is a coming kingdom and the present kingdom which is a spiritual kingdom we enter by being born again but then there is the kingdom that is to come thy kingdom come and that kingdom we're going to enter through much tribulation trial problem persecution and when they had ordained them elders in every church and at prayed with fasting they commended them to the lord on whom they believed in fact uh, he tells us about the summary of his ministry in acts of the apostles chapter 20 acts chapter 20 i'm reading from verse 25 acts chapter 20 verse 25 and now behold i know that ye all among whom i have gone preaching the kingdom of god shall see my face no more he summarized all that he has been doing and he said i've been going around what have i been doing as i came around whether it is ephesus whether it is iconon whether it is lystra what is Thessalonica, anywhere i've gone whether it is philippi in the province of macedonia what have i been doing i have been preaching the kingdom the kingdom of god and he said now i'm giving you a farewell message a final message and it says i have I've gone around preaching the kingdom of god you'll see my face no more wherefore i take you to record this day that i am pure from the blood of all men for i have not shown to declare unto you all the counsel of god all the counsel of god but that in relationship to the kingdom of god take it therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the holy ghost has made you overseers to 
feed the church of God, which he has purchased with his own blood. For I know that after my departing shall grievous world sent in among you, not sparing the flock. Also of your own self shall men arise, speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after them. Those are the people again seeking glory, seeking honor, seeking expansion of their own kingdom. Empire builders they are. And all they want is just for them. They're not seeking for the glory of God. And they're not seeking for the honor of God. And they're not seeking for the expansion of the kingdom of God just for themselves. And they want to rake together, gather together what other people have labored and what other people have brought into the kingdom. They want to extract those people, gather those people, set them apart just for themselves. And here it says, because I know the people will come up after have departed and then they'll be gathering disciples after themselves therefore watch and remember that by the space of three years i cease not to warn every one night and day with tears and now brethren i commend you to god and to the watch of his grace which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among all them which are sanctified you understand then what we're to do in fact uh, this paul the apostle right to the end i read to you from acts of the apostles chapter one the very beginning of acts is the kingdom of god and all through we've been going on now is the kingdom of god and we come to the last chapter of the acts of the apostles it is still the kingdom it is still the kingdom and this is how to seek the kingdom seek the kingdom of god and his righteousness first preach it and bring people out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son into the kingdom of god in acts of the apostles chapter 28 acts chapter 28 looking at verse 23 and when they had appointed him a day they came there came many to him into his lodging to whom he expounded and testified the kingdom of God, persuading them concerning Jesus, both out of the law of Moses and uh, out of the prophets from morning till evening. From morning till evening. From morning till evening. Uh, maybe another time we'll have time to study the preaching of Paul the Apostle. How he preached what he preached how long he preached in one single message but here we are told he was just talking about the kingdom i'm going to challenge you now if you were going to talk about the kingdom would you be able to talk for one hour just talking about the kingdom and not debate to any other thing and then going to moses that is the first five books of the bible and going to the prophets and going to the minor prophets and coming on to the new testament just talking about the kingdom and he did that from morning until evening talking about the kingdom that was a kingdom seeker and every leader ought to be a kingdom seeking leader in verse in Bastachi, Bastachi, and Paul dwelt two whole years in his own hired house and received all that came in unto him, preaching the kingdom of God and teaching those things which concern the Lord Jesus Christ with all confidence, no man forbidding him. Well, in relationship to the kingdom of God, then, as the Lord Jesus Christ said, seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness. What are we to do concerning the kingdom? Number one, enter the kingdom before we can seek the kingdom of god and his righteousness and before we can continue to extend that kingdom of god we enter the kingdom number two enthrone the king enthrone the king let's self abdicate get away from the throne and then bring the king the lord jesus christ bring him on the throne of your heart number three exalt the king exalt the king every program every preaching every counseling everything every project everything you take part in every action every thought everything you do in your lifestyle exalt the king in john chapter 3 verse 13 he must increase but i must decrease here is what John uh, the Baptist said. He said, there is a must, an obligation, a necessity upon my life. He must increase, but I must decrease. The Lord is telling us then, enter the kingdom, enthrone the king, exalt the king, then endure for the kingdom's sake. Endure. 
for the kingdom's sake because it's through much tribulation many trials much persecution is through that will get you to the kingdom of god endure endure everything for the kingdom's sake number five establish the king that is establish the kingdom establish kingdom principles in the hearts of men and women let the people that listen to you and let the people that follow after your message after your preaching after your ministry let them be people that have kingdom principles established in their hearts number six expand extend enlarge the kingdom by preaching by going to the regions beyond by going to places where other people have not been and preaching to those that have never heard expand the kingdom extend the kingdom enlarge the kingdom number seven expect the kingdom there's a coming kingdom expect the coming of the lord and it is when you're doing all the other things you have entered the kingdom you have enthroned the king you have exalted the king you're enduring for the kingdom's sake you're establishing the kingdom principles in the hearts of people you're expanding extending and enlarging the kingdom now you can ex you can expect the coming kingdom the kingdom seeker turns all eyes away from self and he focuses on the king of the kingdom any ambition which centers around and terminates upon oneself is unworthy any ambition any goal any project any dream that you are having that centers around yourself and terminates in yourself is unworthy but an ambition which only is seeking the glory of god as its center is legitimate and praiseworthy i come to number two the passion of a soul seeking leader the leader is a seeker number one is seeking the kingdom but number two is seeking for lost souls in luke chapter 19 i'm reading from verse 10 luke chapter 19 verse 10 for the son of man is come to seek and to save that which was lost the son of man is come to seek and to save that which was lost as you understand then we are to follow the pattern of the lord jesus christ that means we are also to seek the lost how do we seek the lost by the way as you just, just think about it now let's say that somebody is uh, lost let's say you are coming from your area from your location and somebody was expected to be here and we have not found him and we have not got any information about him from home and they will want to seek the lost because he's lost to us and we cannot find him we're seeking him how do we seek him first of all we we'll begin to use our telephone and begin to ask from different different places and different sources what are we doing we're seeking the lost and then if you have a you're in connection or you're connected with somebody and you can use the email you begin to you know type some things out and you're not looking for flowery language you're seeking the laws you are very urgent about this and then you send the email you're seeking the laws but in this day how do we do it sometimes we even go to the police and we're making announcement and we're making announcement over the radio sometimes it may be over the television anywhere people can get the information we're looking for this individual we we'll send the information there what are we doing we're seeking for the laws and then we're checking up in the various uh, cities in the various towns all along the road all along the line and we know he might be here he might be there we're seeking the laws we're even asking his relatives the people that we know we're seeking the laws how do we seek the laws today what are the things we can do to seek the law the laws today a lot of things you can use your telephone you can give the text message and you can also uh, you can use the email you can use literature Literature. you can use cassette you can go to the radio you can go to television you can use the internet you can use programs all these programs and everything you are doing you're seeking the lost and of course you know that if one method doesn't find the laws then you go for another method if that method has not totally found all the lost then you go for another method if that method has not totally found all the people you're seeking for then you go to another method seeking the lost so that they can be saved we're looking at luke chapter 15 luke chapter 15 and we're looking at it from verse 4 for what man of you having an hundred sheep 
if he lose one of them does not leave the ninety and nine in the wilderness and go after that which is lost until he find it he goes after that which is lost and find it there's something we learn here that is mobility mobility we cannot sit down in one place and say we're seeking the lost uh, you know that the, the lord jesus christ said this one solitary single sheep had been lost and you know you are responsible for this uh, sheep and you know that this sheep belongs to your fold and that sheep should belong to to that congregation and it's not there and she's not there and you're seeking if you're seeking it says he will leave the ninety and nine he will go after the loss until he find it would you notice uh, those words there the first word is leave the second word is go and the third word is until until he find it you know if we are passive our quiet our static and we're not moving at all we'll not be able to seek the lost but the lord is telling us leave and then go and keep on going until until you find that which is lost i'm sure you understand here when it says a hundred a hundred is uh, made is uh, giving us as a whole number as a totality and it's saying what, what if you have a whole nation and even 99 percent of that whole nation they are saved in the fold and it's only one percent that is not in the fold will you not leave the 90 and nine in the security of the fellowship of one another and then go after the one percent that are not in the fold yet ah 90 and nine already saved and only one percent what a message the lord is giving us that even if 99 percent of our community had been saved the one percent remaining we should still have passion and concern for them and see reach out to them and go and seek for them until they are saved but what if you turn it around and then you understand 99 percent of our world has not been saved 99 percent of your community has not been saved all likelihood it's likely that only one percent or even less than one percent of your community of our country of our state of every nation has been saved really born again or maybe in our church and then the 99 percent outside if we are to leave the 99 percent the secret of the fellowship and then to go after the one percent how much more when you only have one percent shouldn't you go after the 99 percent uh, you know sometimes uh, as we talk about our adopted nations that we are to go to those adopted nations uh, there are some people that here they are here in our country and they stay with their congregation and the overseer the national overseer from that country is sending to them when are you going to visit us oh we are coming we are planning but my brother that's what you told me three years ago and since three years you have not come oh my brother you don't understand there is a lot we are doing here we have some you know the, the responsibility here in in our local church here in our state church here the responsibility is so much yes can't you just think about us as the one percent the one percent outside there you have a crowd there you have a large number there you have the 99 percent there and you have the group coordinators and you have the region overseers and you have the other leaders that can keep that fold the 99 percent while you are away can't you give just one month out of your time and leave the work in the hands of those group coordinators and all those other people and spare the time and come and reach us those who are outside they are just one percent one percent of the people your presence will encourage us your sharing will encourage us that you're even able to live where you are and you come to visit us the people will have a sense of attachment and belonging to the headquarters church please come and the lord is telling us leave and then go and then do something there stay there until until the work is done and we're looking at acts of the apostles chapter 11 again in acts of the apostles chapter 11 we're looking at uh, verse 25 and verse 26 acts chapter 11 verse 25 then departed barnabas to tarsus for to seek saul for to seek saul for to seek Saul. Why am I emphasizing that? Who knew what a Saul would become eventually? Yes, we know that Adonis had an idea. Go and tell him. He's a chosen vessel. 
What did Barnabas know about what Saul will become? What did the people in Jerusalem know as to what Saul will become? And what did all the other leaders in the church at that time, what did they know as to what Saul would become? And yet there was somebody, I don't know what he will become, but all the same, the passion is within me. The concern is within me. This young man, I must go and seek him. You don't know. You may, you may be seeking for an apostle. A person that will shake the world. These that have turned the world upside down are come hither also because somebody sought him and found him and then integrated him with the church in Antioch. In verse 26, it tells us then, and when he had found him, you know, he went after him and he did not stop until he found him. And when he had found him, he brought him unto Antioch and it came to pass that a whole year he brought him into fellowship into the fellowship of the other children of God so that he can be established and so that he can be strengthened and so that he'll be able to have his life refocused and redirected and then we're told they assembled with the church and they taught much people and the disciples were first called Christians in Antioch and that's the purpose of seeking and that's the that's the result of seeking uh, would you see the result for the case of this uh, Barnabas seeking Saul in Acts of the Apostles chapter 13 from verse 1 Acts chapter 13 verse 1 now there were in the church that was at Antioch certain prophets and teachers as Barnabas number one number one first and Simeon that was called Niger and Lucius of Cyrene and Manain which had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch and Saul at this time it was still last but the last shall be first and Barnabas was still first and here we learn that they were just teachers as Barnabas had brought Saul in the process of time meeting together in the church in Antioch this young man Saul this new convert Saul had become a teacher and then in verse 2 and as they ministered to the Lord and fasted the Holy Ghost said separate me Barnabas and Saul for the work whereunto I have called them again let me remind you that as we are going through this uh, leadership series you are writing what you are hearing from me and from the word of God then you are writing what you are hearing from the spirit of God what's the spirit of God telling you is there a soul that if you will go after that soul and seek him out and bring him into fellowship and make him feel welcomed in the fellowship and then help him in the in the first few days of instability of not having any friend in that fellowship you help him to be established there and then eventually you don't leave him until you help him to become a teacher and until the voice of the lord through the spirit of god and through the leadership of the church is saying separate out me so and so and the soul and this person you are bringing to there eventually becomes a teacher eventually becomes an evangelist eventually becomes a missionary eventually becomes an apostle and eventually becomes a master builder for the kingdom of god who is that person write it down if you don't try it martin luther told us in his writing that uh, the faintest ink is better than the sharpest brain and therefore write it down the name of that individual where is he living when last did you see him or if he's been in the fellowship, just hidden away in the fellowship, who is helping him, trying to get him out of the crowd and singling him out so that he can become another Saul of Tarsus, a Paul, an apostle. Therefore, let us go after them and let us seek them. And in this Paul, the apostle eventually came into the ministry and he was really ministering to the Lord. And then we're told in 2 Timothy chapter 1, 2 Timothy chapter 1, I'm reading from verse 15 this thou knowest that all they which are in asia be turned away from me of whom are phygelos and homogeneous the lord give mercy unto the house of onesiphorus for he oft refreshed me and was not ashamed of my chains but when he was in rome he sought me out very diligently and found me 
all the apostles are now coming to the ministry and he's been going about preaching everywhere and but he got into prison he got into trouble into persecution and he was in, in prison in the prison in rome and then everybody forsook paul they didn't remember the hands that fed them they didn't remember the man that labored and fed them with the word of god they forsook him but this man only say for us he sought for him he sought him out and he kept on seeking and searching and asking questions until he found him he was very diligent about it the lord grant unto him that he may find mercy of the lord he may find mercy of the lord in that day and in how many things he ministered unto me at ephesus thou knowest very well that means then you we'll we should be seeking after the people of god mention them by name and i i just i just came to see i just came to visit you just to be able to encourage you to say keep on firing on we know the trouble you are going through but we always remember you on our knees and the lord will be with you until that final kingdom until it will keep you till the final day in esther chapter 10 esther chapter 10 in esther chapter 10 we're looking at verse 3 and mordecai the jew was next unto king ahasuerus and great among the jews and accepted of the multitude of his brethren seeking the wealth of his people and speaking peace to all his seed the seeking we're talking about is not limited to just the apostles it's not limited to just the preachers it's not limited to just the pastors and there are some people like mordecai and they're very close to the presidency there are some people like mordecai they're very close to the governor there are some people like mordecai they're very close to the state house there are some people like mordecai they're very close to the decision makers in the land and even though they may not be coordinators or group coordinators because their activities in the presidency or their activities in the state house or their, or their activities in the government will not allow them to have all the time to be coordinator group coordinator or maybe a preacher and yet they are in that place at such a time like this that they are seeking for the welfare and the profit and the promotion and the progress of the people of God and of the church of the living God and if you have them in your stage don't abandon them and sometimes the attitude many of us have is that well that brother he could have been a coordinator but he didn't allow you know the Lord to use him and he's burying himself in the activities of the government in the presidency there I hope that one day he will realize that that's not the place for him that he will be able to come and then he can be a coordinator over these a few people here we can create a new district for him don't think like that anymore even as they're like Mordecai and they're very near next to the king next to Ahasuerus they can still seek the welfare of the people of God and you can make use of them and let them know some of them think that because I don't have time to be a zonal leader I don't have time to be a women leader I don't have time to be a women coordinator maybe a group coordinator because of that I'm useless I, well when this my appointment is over and then I have all the time to myself I'll be able then I'll present myself to the pastor my brother if you are hearing me don't do it like that even while you are still there next to our house or next to the king or next to the president or next to the governor you can still do something you are seeking for the welfare and the profit and the wealth of the people of God in Nehemiah I am reading to you from chapter 12 Nehemiah chapter 12 and we are looking at verse 27 Nehemiah chapter 12 verse 27 and at the dedication of the wall of Jerusalem they sought the Levites out of all their places they sought the Levites out from all their places before Nehemiah came all those Levites had been scattered their ministry had been erased it is like there was nothing for them to do anymore and then this new leader now he came Nehemiah came and he said we're going to dedicate this uh, uh, the wall of Jerusalem go and seek for all the Levites and that's what we ought to do the people that maybe they were workers about five years ago about seven years ago and now they dropped from the work and it happened slowly gradually pastor please give me chance I have a one-year course that I just want to attend and I want to concentrate give all the time all the attention to it now when I finish I'll come back 
And then after one year, you forgot him. He also forgot the promise he made. And then he was now in the pool of the people. No more available. Another one said, I, I just said, you know, well, I've been having difficulty with this uh, pregnancy. And uh, the other time I got pregnant, I lost it. The other time I also got, I lost it. This one now, the doctor said, I need bed rest. And therefore, please, uh, pastor, excuse me. I'll not be doing any work now for this time. I, this baby is precious. And that's all right. Just when you finish, please come back and then she delivered that baby not seen that baby another year has gone and then she is looking for another baby now thank god for this one but you know i'm not i'm looking for a boy i'm looking for twins and what they're still looking and searching the dropout another one also when we're making the reorganization restructuring was simply say, give us permission we don't have enough now this this is too scanty that other one is too scanty we're matching them together and because of that we're going to drop it you've not done anything wrong you're all right you understand the restructuring yes i understand you dropped him and then the fellow fell since i'm not a coordinator what am i doing in the leadership meeting going there every tuesday every wednesday i think i should just stay at home and read my bible Bible and do whatever I can do. Also, he dropped out. All those Levites that dropped out for one reason or the other. Now that we're learning all this, look at what Nehemiah did at the time of the dedication of the wall of Jerusalem. He sought out all the Levites from all their places to bring them to Jerusalem to keep the dedication with gladness, both with thanksgiving and with singing with cymbals and sacrifices and with halves. Let us go after them and seek them and find them and make use of them. A Christian leader then with the mind and the motive of Christ is a seeker. What does he seek? Number one is a people seeker. He's seeking for people like Barnabas sought for Paul and like uh, Nehemiah sought for the Levites, the people seeker. Number two is a passionate seeker. Is a passionate seeker. If he's seeking after you, when he gets, you can see his passion. You can read his passion on his as a springing on his feet, and he's running after you and seeking after you. A passionate seeker. Number three, a purposeful seeker. He has a purpose. He has a purpose. I'm going after him. I'm going to get her in. I'm running at her. I'm going to get her until I bring him back into the fellowship. Until I bring her back into usefulness. A purposeful seeker. A painstaking seeker. Painstaking seeker. Meticulous. And we we'll look at every detail. Every step I ought to take. Every letter I ought to write. Every phone call I ought to make. A painstaking seeker. A prayerful seeker. Lord, lead me to him today and help me lord to meet him at the right time in a good mood give me the word so lord that i'm going to say so that he will come to he will not resist he will come all the excuses he might be given he has given to other people lord cut off those excuses so that when i get to him today when i get to her today she will accept to come and serve the lord with all her strength with all her energy number six a prevailing seeker he will not let you go. A prevailing seeker. And then number seven, a productive seeker. The seeking is yielding fruit. A productive seeker is a people seeker. It's a passionate seeker. It's a purposeful seeker. It's a painstaking seeker. It's a prayerful seeker. It's a prevailing seeker. It's a productive seeker. He, he prays. He plans. And he proceeds in love, seeking to bring sinners to salvation and seeking to bring saints into service. I come to point number three. The perseverance of a treasure-seeking leader. The perseverance of a treasure-seeking leader. In Matthew chapter 13, Matthew chapter 13, I'm reading from verse 44. In Matthew chapter 13, verse 44, Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto treasure hidden in a field, the which when a man has found, he hideth for the joy, for joy thereof, goeth and selleth all that he has, and buyeth that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a merchant man seeking goodly seed goodly pearls who when he had found one pearl of great price went and sold all that he had and bought it it's a treasure seeker 
There are treasures that we need for the work of God. And as a child of God, you want to have that treasure in your life. You want to have that treasure in your ministry. You want to have that treasure so that you can be successful in the work the Lord has called you to do. This treasure we're talking about is spiritual. And the treasure is in the Lord Jesus Christ. In Colossians chapter 2 verse 3. Colossians chapter 2 verse 3 the treasures we seek and the treasures that will be useful in the kingdom of god colossians chapter 3 chapter 2 verse 3 in whom are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge the wisdom we need that's the treasure and the knowledge we need that's the treasure and we find everything totally supplied by christ because he is full of wisdom and is full of knowledge all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge you have in the lord jesus christ and if you want to really serve the lord productively and successfully effectually effectively you are going to be a persistent persevering treasure seeker as a leader in philippians chapter 3 now let's see the way uh, paul the apostle sought for such a treasure in philippians chapter 3 verse 7 but what things were gained to me those i counted lost for christ yea doubtless and i count all things but lost for the excellency of the knowledge of christ jesus my lord for whom i have suffered the loss of all things and do count them but don't that i may win christ you understand better now that i may win christ you already had christ as a savior you already had christ as a sanctifier you already had christ as the baptizer in the holy ghost but he's seeking for the treasures in christ that i may win that i may have that i may possess that i may use all those treasures of wisdom and knowledge i receive in christ that's why i count all things laws and done because i'm seeking for the treasure of the kingdom in verse 9 and be found in him not having mine own righteousness which is of the law but that which is through the is through the faith of christ the righteousness which is of god by faith that i may know him and the power of his resurrection he wanted power too the power that raised jesus from the dead he says and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering being made conformable unto his death if by any means i might attain unto the resurrection of the dead not as though i had already attained either were already perfect fully matured and fully made perfect but i follow after i follow after that's the perseverance that's the persistence that's the passionate seeking i follow after if that i may apprehend that for which also i am apprehended for of christ jesus brethren i count not myself to have apprehended but this one thing i do forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before i Press toward the mark for the price of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. And that's the attitude we ought to have. Seeking for wisdom. That's the attitude we ought to have. Seeking for the treasures of the kingdom. In Proverbs chapter 2. Proverbs chapter 2. And I'm reading to you from verse 3. Proverbs chapter 2 verse 3. All through to verse 7. Yea, it thou Christ after knowledge liftest up thy voice for understanding if thou seekest her as silver and searcheth for her as for hidden treasure now so you have to look for knowledge the knowledge of the word the knowledge of how you can be effective in ministry in the ministry the lord had called you to and the wisdom that you need you're seeking for those things as if you're searching for hidden treasure then shall thou understand the fear of the lord and find knowledge the knowledge of the lord for the lord giveth wisdom out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding he layeth up sound wisdom for the righteous he is a buckler to them that walk uprightly a buckler to them that walk uprightly we're told in second corinthians chapter 4 second corinthians chapter 4 verse 7 the treasure we're seeking the wisdom we're seeking the knowledge we're seeking from the lord the power the power of the holy ghost to operate that we're seeking from the lord in second corinthians chapter 4 verse 7 but we have this treasure in having vessels that the excellency of the power may be of god and not of us that the excellency 
may be of God and not of us seeking for the treasure for the power to minister in a way that is very very effective we'll come back to Proverbs chapter 8 Proverbs chapter 8 if we're seeking to grow to full potential in the ministry we must be a treasure seeking leaders but we'll sift the wheat from the chaff we'll distinguish the important from the unimportant we'll differentiate the worthless from the worthy goals and then we'll pursue the treasure of the kingdom such a leader will persevere in seeking essential knowledge will persevere in seeking useful wisdom and will persevere in seeking profitable power to accomplish the god given ministry the lord has given you the ministry and then you want to have everything that you need to be successful in that ministry essential knowledge useful wisdom practical wisdom and profitable power so that you'll be able to get everything done the lord has called you to do then you are going to persevere in seeking in proverbs chapter 8 reading from verse 12 proverbs chapter 8 verse 12 i wisdom dwell with prudence and find out knowledge of witty inventions the fear of the lord is to hate evil pride and arrogancy and the evil way and the forward mouth do i hate counsel is mine and sound wisdom i am understanding i have strength by me kings reign and princes decree justice if the kings cannot do without this kind of practical useful profitable wisdom how about you and how about me that's why we should be seeking from the lord passionate in that seeking by me princes rule and nobles even all the judges of the earth i love them that love me and those that seek me early shall find me riches and honor are with me ye durable riches and righteousness my food is better than gold yea than fine gold and my revenue than choice silver i lead in the way of righteousness in the midst of the paths of judgment that i may cause those that love me to inherit substance and i will feel their treasures verse 34 and verse 35 blessed is the man that heareth me watching daily at my gates waiting at the post of my doors for whoso findeth me findeth life and shall obtain favor of the lord the lord is telling us that if we're going to be real leaders new testament leaders a leader the leader is a seeker it's a kingdom seeking leader is a soul seeking leader and is a treasure seeking leader and the lord is saying seek ye and ye shall find seek and ye shall find let's rise up and let's talk to the lord in prayer become a seeker all that you need for the kingdom all that you need to be productive in the kingdom all that you need to be successful in the kingdom seek the lord and the lord will give you ask and ye shall find knock and it shall be open unto you seek and ye shall find for every one that asketh receiveth he that knocketh it shall be open unto him he that seeketh findeth be a seeker pray to the lord lord make me a conscientious seeker a concerned seeker a compassionate seeker a committed seeker not haphazard not lazy a consistent seeker a confident seeker seek by faith understand everyone that seeketh findeth you'll find what are you seeking you're seeking the kingdom you have entered into the kingdom of already and thrown the king in your heart exalt the king he must increase he must increase he must increase and i must decrease you're not seeking for power for yourself you are not seeking for success so that people will know you are a great man a great leader an effective a successful leader you are better than everybody else selfish ambition exalt the king endure for the kingdom's sake while you are ministering there may be some persecution opposition and some things that are not convenient for the flesh never mind endure for the kingdom's sake establish kingdom principles in your own heart and in the hearts of the people that listen to you that seek in the kingdom plan programs that will expand the kingdom extend the kingdom enlarge the kingdom 
And while you're serving the Lord, expect the King, the Lord, to come anytime. Expect the kingdom. Have interest in people. It's wonderful to know the Bible, to read the Bible, to love the Bible, to seek for knowledge in the Bible. Love people too. And seek after them. Sinners, seek them so they can be saved. How about believers, members of your church? Seek after them and make them useful in the kingdom of God. Discourage believers or those who are Paul's in the making. They are still Saul. They are hiding away in Tassos. Run after them. Seek after them. Write their names down. Seek them. Be passionate about it. Purposeful about it. Painstaking about it. Prayerful about it. Keep on seeking until you prevail on them. Make them useful and become a productive seeker. Be a treasure-seeking leader. The treasure of wisdom. The treasure of knowledge. The treasure of the power of the Spirit. A treasure-seeking leader. Only then will you have all the wisdom, all the knowledge, all the power to do what the Lord has called you to do. Heavenly Father, we thank you very much for what you have led us into. Thank you for your word. Thank you because you are making us. And in this process of making, you are melting us. You are molding us. You are mentoring us. You are maturing us. Until we'll have the mastery and become so matured. We'll be developing into the full measure of the Lord Jesus Christ. We're praying, Lord, that you help us. That we will become kingdom seekers in Jesus' name. We will become soul seekers in Jesus' name. And treasure seekers so that everything we need to be successful in the ministry you have called us into. will have, will possess and will use in a profitable way that your work will prosper in our hands. All the decisions we have taken and all the things we have written down. The people we have written down that we are going to seek after them. Lord, we we'll pray that immediately after this planning meeting, the concern, the compassion will be within us. And we'll go after them with passion and compassion. And we'll bring them to the Lord in Jesus' name. Direct us in the right direction. Help us, Lord, as we go after them, that we'll go with the mind of Christ. And we'll go in the knowledge of the Lord and the wisdom of the Lord. And we'll pray, Lord, as we dig deep into your word, all the wisdom we need, all the knowledge we need, and the power of the Holy Ghost we need, you shower upon every one of us in Jesus' name. So that, Lord, we will be successful, productive, effective in the ministry, in the work you have committed into our hands in Jesus' name. Prosper this work in our hands. Thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.